last speaker for <coughs> this session is um, Andras Kovac. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, who will talk about conservativity of general type theory corresponds to staged computation. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. So, so let's start this talk. And actually, uh, the title says conservativity of two-level type theory corresponds to stage compilation, but, but it's kind of a, a more theoretical result, and I will only sp spend uh, uh, one page or one slide in the very end. And because this is such a short talk, I thought that it would be more interesting to just give a, like a short tutorial, like what is staged programming using two-level type theory, and, and instead to do some basic coding uh, examples. But just a quick introduction. So two-level type theory, uh, it was introduced by Wojewodzki and then later some other people uh, for the goal of doing synthetic homotopy theory. So it was like closely related to HOT. But uh, the idea was kind of like met doing metaprogramming so that we have a metaprogramming layer and then the object theory is essentially homotopy type theory. And then we want to generate some constructions in HOT by doing metaprogramming. Uh, and actually, it turns out that this is literally uh, a system for two-stage compilation. So you can just directly use the rules of the system for doing two-stage compilation. And it works extremely well. And uh, we don't have to say that, OK, now the object theory has to be hot. It can be pretty much anything. And also, the meta language can be pretty much anything. So we can use it in a wide variety of uh, two-stage compilation settings. And staged compilation is some of, uh, like some of you might be familiar with template Haskell or meta -Okama. And the point is, is that we have some kind of staging annotations and uh, the staging annotations are executed at compile time and the result is that we generate a bunch of code. Uh, but it is an important point is that in the generated code, we do not want the staging annotations, these quotes and splices to be present anymore. And this is the point of staged compilation. And sometimes this is confused with staged computations. And, uh, and I think, for example, like the later modality is an instance of a staged computation. But in that case, we do not have this guarantee that we take something with staging operations and then we can compile it to something which does not contain such operations anymore. And like, for example, in template Haskell, we want to get some code output which does not contain template Haskell operations anymore. Okay, so let's look at the rules of uh, two-level type theory. So you have two universes, and both are closed under arbitrary type formers. We can just choose, and it's important that no elimination is allowed from one universe to the other. And uh, but how do we interact then between the two universes? So there is a lifting. So if we have something in U zero, then we have the lift of A in U one. And the interpretation of this in terms of staging is that if A is an object uh, theoretic type, then the lift of A is the type of metaprograms which generate code with type A. So the lift of A is kind of the type of, of metaprograms generating uh, code with type A. And then we have quoting. So if we have an object theoretic expression T, then we can just quote it, and it's the metaprogram which immediately returns that expression. And we also have splicing, so that if we have a metaprogram, then uh, we can just execute it and then insert the result of the computation into the code output. And we also know that quoting and splicing are definitional inverses. And these are all, all the rules, all the basic rules of, of two-level type theories. Okay? So let's look at one, one very simple example. So what if we want to just have some kind of inline constants? So here you can see that I have a program with two definitions. And one definition, sorry, maybe I can use the, the cursor here to point at things. So one definition is just uh, a compile time expression, so it's a, a natural number expression, and then you can see that it is quoted. And here I write suck zero and zero zero because I use zero to denote that this is a runtime or object level thing. And in some other places, I will use one subscript to denote the meta level things. So this is just an expression, 
and uh, I can define a function, and in the body of the function, so this is an object level function, I can just splice in this, uh, this definition of two. And then the point of staging is that we take uh, like the whole input and then we perform every splice, and uh, in every splice we compute all the meta level computations and we just insert the code in the output. So if I perform the staging, then what happens and now I still, yeah. So what happens is that this two binding disappears because it's a meta level binding and only the, the object level bindings remain in the code output and you can see that I have an inlined uh, sac sac zero here in the code. Okay, <coughs> and what about using uh, compile time functions? So you can see that here I have the uh, polymorphic identity function on the meta level. But, uh, but I can also use it at the object level. Like for example here, defining an identity function on just booleans. And the point is, is that I can do a splicing and inside the splicing, I can make a call to this meta level identity function. But then I have to pass the quotation of a type and then a quotation of a term with that type. And here I actually have to use this definitional isomorphism of quotation and splicing uh, in order to make this this well typed, but uh, which I will not detail. But it's going to, to work out just fine. And if I perform the staging, then uh, this application of this compile time identity it just reduces to to essentially nothing. Okay, and what let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. So what if I want to write a map function uh, which always inlines its, its function argument? And the way that I'm modeling here this, uh, this inlining is that I say that I have this folder zero operation already assumed, and I just want to compile every function into a folder uh, in the object language. <coughs> and you can see that here I have this definition of, of, a, of a map. Uh, but note that I, I need to abstract over expressions, so I need to ex abstract over metaprograms which return object level types. So I'm abstracting over a lift of u0, and then later I have to use first the splicing of this a, and then once again take the lift of it, because I have to talk about meta level types. And if I only have something in U0, I still have to lift it up to, to get a meta level type. Okay, uh, but the point is, <coughs> is that I am, I am also able to abstract over uh, object level types using this kind of idiom. And then I can use all the quotations and the splices in the right way. And uh, if you try to, uh, so we can kind of try to compute along the instantiations and all the splices and all the meta-level computations, but the output of staging will be just uh, that we get this f function, which has this n plus two in lines inside the definition of a folder. Okay, and we can also compute types by staging. So here you can see that now I have a meta-level natural number so a natural number in the meta theory. And I also have a computation which returns an object level type, and I get a computation which returns another object level type. So here, what happens is that I do recursion on the meta level natural number, and if it's zero, I just return a quotation of the unit type. If it's a successor, then I return a quotation of the splice of this A, and the splice of the recursive call of this definition itself. So here I'm using some kind of pattern matching notation to make it a bit more, more readable. And, uh, and now I have this definition of tuple three, which is just uh, the specialization of this thing to three, but also fully in the object language. And if I stage it, then it computes to, to this kind of uh, output. <coughs> okay. And uh, I also I can also do a map for this kind of vectors, and here I really have to use dependent types during staging, because vector was defined by recursion on natural numbers. So now the map is necessarily a dependently typed function, 
and uh, and I think like this is a very compelling use case for for having staging with dependent types because we already have systems for staging without dependent types. But in many staging applications, we actually cannot really do interesting things without dependent types. And uh, one and now we are doing induction on the meta level natural number, and if the length of the vector is zero, we are just returning the quotation of dt, which is the element of the unit type. And if it's, a, if it's a length of successor, then we return a quotation of a pair expression such that we are using this f function in the first projection and then we are using a recursive call in the, in the second projection. <coughs> and here you can see that I just defined this f function, uh, which is once again a specialization of this map. Uh, and I apply this uh, x plus two function for uh, for elements of this of this pair because it's a vector of length two, and in the staging output I get this kind of code which uh, inlines this function everywhere. And it it is actually not necessarily a good idea to inline function applications everywhere like this, but uh, but there are very well known and standard techniques in uh, partial variation and staged compilation to try to reduce code duplication that, that might uh, occur. Okay, and uh, so what about the ergonomics? So you have seen that uh, there are like, there is a lot of staging annotations in the code example that I wrote, but actually almost all quotes and splices can be inferred. So we can just use bidirection elaboration and some coercive subtyping and some unification. Uh, and because we have the typing of stages in the universes, most of the time we actually know what the expected universe or what is the expected stage of an expression is. So it's quite easy to do a bidirectional style inference for these staging annotations. And so this, is, this one is the last slide, just uh, uh, which is the title of the talk. <laughs> so staging as conservativity. So essentially what happens is that the object theory is just the type theory that we are generating code in. It's just the output of staging. And there is the object level fragment of two level type theory, which is two level type theory such that you can only use, uh, you can only write types and terms in the, in the object stage, and you can only have context such that everything in the context is uh, object level. And the conservativity means that Essentially, like whatever you can write in the object theory, you can write it in the object level fragment of two level type theory. And whatever you can write in two level type theory, you can write, uh, you can also express in the, in the object theory. So there is this kind of bijection. And one part of the bijection is actually the staging algorithm. And to show that this is a bijection up to beta eta conversion is a bit more technical, and then we have to use some kind of proof-relevant logical relations argument, and also staging is given by evaluation in a standard pre-shift model of two-level type theory. Okay, so at this link, you can find a prototype implementation with all these nice stage annotation inferent features, and, and this is also conditionally accepted to ICFP, so there's a preprint pre for it, and, um, and some tutorial, and thanks for your attention. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, so you talked about meta programs that generate terms, uh, but you could also have meta programs that kind of analyze terms or pattern match on the syntax. So is that also possible to do in this kind of framework or not? Uh, it is possible, and I discuss this in the preprint, but uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem that it always works. So it works, for, it works well if you have simple object theories, like simply typed object theories, because the way staging works, essentially we want everything in two-level type theory to be stable under object theoretic substitution. And if you can arbitrarily analyze code, then you can violate stability under right. substitution. So you cannot check if a term is a variable, for example. That yes, and, and I think the solution is to say that we have an alternative semantics. We say that uh, we are only stable under weakening, but not substitution. But in that case, the object theory cannot be dependently typed because 
you cannot even specify type dependency without substitution. Okay, yeah. And uh, maybe another possible application would maybe be for uh, universe polymorphism. So you could have the yes. universe levels at a meta level, right? And then only have fi concrete fixed universes at the object level. Yes. I mean, um, in the usual implementations of depend types, you already have a compile time evaluation, right? So basically, if you drop all the, um, the splicing and stuff, then and you get a simply a ordinary type theory program, that, then it also would uh, produce, I mean, you could produce these optimized versions, right? Um, so, um, so is the point of getting more control where this evaluation is happening or? What? Yes, the, the point of, I mean, if you take, we can always erase all the lifts and quotes and splices, but then the only thing that we can do compile time evaluation in a, like in a, in a standard way or in the natural way is just to normalize everything, right? Mm -hmm. And then the point of quotes and splices is that we have a fine grain control over which inlining and which beta reduction to perform at compile time. Yeah, it might also be interesting to look at Frank Fenning's work. I mean, for instance, um, he has like um, like two modes where you have code and um, how to say. So code is basically only um, uh, quotiented under alpha equality and not beta, right? And then you have the meta level, which is beta, eta, and um, mm -hmm. uh, there is this uh, Lix paper 2001 on um, irrelevance and um, also intentionality, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be interesting. So, so I think that's kind of related to what I mentioned is that uh, if I say that the, the object stage is, is a simple type theory, then I have the choice of saying that I don't have beta eta in the object layer, I only have stability under weakening, and then I can do this kind of intentional analysis. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks. I think this is a very interesting work. Uh, could you go back one slide, please? Yep. Um, so I think there could be applications of two-level type theory where you don't have the first part of this bijection. So you say there's a bijection betwe between uh, types of the object theory and the object fragment and uh, terms of, of both um, theories. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, in, in the applications which I have in mind of two-level type theory, the bijections for the terms are the important part, and the types, well, maybe they are nice to have, but maybe not essential. So would it make sense in the, in the context of staging to drop the first part of, of these three points? <coughs> uh, so so drop, the f drop the type part? Mm. I think in that case, we have to say something like, you can only stage terms if the types uh, come from the object theory. But I think in that case, it makes sense. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is like, for me personally, this is like the main application. Like we have some types in the object theory, and then we view these types in the object layer of a two-level type theory, and we uh, construct some terms in two-level type theory, and then we want to get them back. Mm -hmm. But for those types in the object layer of the two-level type theory, which actually don't come from anything of the original object theory, we don't really care. Mm -hmm. So they could be there, um, and maybe it's convenient to have them there for whatever reason. But if they are there, then we don't really want to ask anything mm -hmm. of, of them, and we want to mm -hmm. be able to ignore them during staging or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think like uh, it's it's natural to also do staging for types, because as soon as you have dependent types, 
uh, the terms appear in the types, and then you can have quotes and splices in inside the types. So even if if we actually we only have the types which comes from the object theory, which is witnessed by this conservativity, but because the quotes and the splices infest the types, so usually we still have to do the staging if you have type dependencies. Uh, yes, I mean you're right. It it probably becomes very messy. So I think this is yeah. really the reason why in our original paper, like you said, um, in, in your abstract, we only prove a weak version of this conservativity. Yeah. Right. Okay, thanks. <laughs>